Hey there, in this video we're going to look at using the quadratic formula to find zeros of quadratic functions and solutions to quadratic equations. Let's look at that right now. So to use the quadratic formula here now, whether you've seen uh, the quadratic formula or not, it uh, is a way of finding the x-intercepts directly from the values of a, b, and c with a formula. And the formula looks a little bit complicated if you haven't seen it before minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c the entire thing divided by 2 times the a value that comes from if you uh, take this general quadratic and complete the square on it and solve for x in that by completing the square that's what you get that's the subject of another video if you want to watch that uh, if if you want to watch and learn how to use the formula and look at that later, that is fine too. So for this first one here, uh, if we're going to use that formula, I think it's a good idea to make a list of the values you have. A is 1 there in front of the x squared. A is 1. You don't usually write a 1, but that's what that is. B here is negative 3. C is positive 2. So if we're going to use that formula, uh, I'm going to write it out with those values substituted in. So if I have x minus b it's minus and i'm going to put that value of uh, minus three in there and plus or minus square root of well we have minus three for b again the reason i'm putting those brackets is because the negative is squared minus four times one times two the entire thing divided by two times one so that's a pretty complicated formula to start with, but you can simplify it pretty easily. I wouldn't try to put that in your calculator that way because you're really liable to make mistakes. The numbers are not too hard to work with. This actually, lots of people just go directly to what I'm about to write here, which is if it's minus minus three, this just means take the B value and do the opposite of it. So if the B value is already negative three, you could just write plus three there if you want. And when you're going to square this, it doesn't actually matter whether the b value is negative or positive because you, when you square it, it's going to be a positive. So some people just either write the b value as positive or just square it right then and there. And then the last thing here, that's going to be 8. So I'll write that out. Minus 8 divided by 2. Now if I simplify it even further here, I've got x equals 3 plus or minus square root of 1 over 2. Or in other words, I run out of room here. Uh, x is 3 plus or minus square root of 1 is just 1. If that thing happens to be a perfect square, I'm going to evaluate it and then uh, work it out. This means my two x values are uh, two different things here. Either I have uh, 3 plus 1 divided by 2, or I have 3 minus 1 divided by 2. So in this case, it's 4 divided by 2, and in this case, it's Two divided by two, so my two numbers are. This is uh, two, and this is one. I have two values there, one and two. Those are my two solutions to that. You can put them in and check if you want. If you substitute them back into the original thing, and uh, what I neglected to do first was to say that I what I'm looking for is when this is zero. Solving for the x-intercepts is looking for when that's zero. I, uh, I made that assumption in my head without even writing it, but that's what you're doing. You're finding this formula gives you the values when that uh, standard form quadratic equals zero, the zeros of the function. All right, let's try one more here. Now, what I'm going to uh, remember to do this time is if I'm looking for the x-intercepts, I want to know when that is zero. And I am going to uh, just write the rest of this out, but I'm going to solve it by thinking about what the three values are. A is 3, B is 5, C is negative 4 this time. So I'm going to start with my formula here. All right, so if I'm going to substitute my numbers in here, negative B, so negative 5 plus or minus square root 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 4. The entire thing divided by 2 times 3. Now, if I start to uh, work that out, we'll simplify it again a bit here. Negative 5 plus or minus square root of 25 
Now, what I have here, I'm gonna work out the numbers here, but I have uh, four times three times four, and I have two minus signs involved there. Four times three times four is actually 48. And it's actually gonna be minus negative 48. So what I'm actually gonna write instead here is just uh, to keep things simple, I'm gonna make it plus 48 because that's what that is. And then I have a six on the bottom. So if I simplify this a bit, I've got negative five plus or minus square root of 73 over six. This is not a perfect square. So I'm not gonna be able to do like before and work out the number and keep going here uh, without my calculator. If I wanna leave it as an exact answer, this is as far as I'm gonna be able to go. That's an exact answer. Uh, Cause I can't evaluate that root 73 and can't do much with it. If I wanna work it out as a decimal, I need to grab my calculator and find the two values. Negative five. I'm gonna first do the minus one. Minus the square root of 73. And then we'll go down to the bottom, put our six there. And that gives us that one value. I could enter the whole same thing and I could just put a plus. But actually, on this calculator, if I go second entry, it gives me that back again. Lots of calculators do that. If I go back a bit here and then just change that to a plus this time, it gives me the other one there. So we have negative 2.26 and 0.59. Negative 2.26 and 0 0.59 if I wrote those down correctly. These are approximate answers, so I got to say approximately equal to that, All right? If you wanted an exact answer, that's where you'd have to leave it at that. All right, let's do one more here. What we're going to do is we're going to solve an equation now. This is a quadratic equation because it's got a squared term in it somewhere. It's not a quadratic function. It's not y equals, but it's an equation that we can solve just the same way using the quadratic formula. First, we need to put it into standard form on one side equal to zero. So I'm going to need to uh, multiply that out. I would get the left side would still be the same, plus 9x equals 3x minus 3 if I expand that. If I collect it all on the left, I'm going to have 2x squared. If I take away 3x from both sides, I'm going to have plus 6x, and then I'm going to have plus 3 when I move that over equal to 0. If I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve this, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to list the values that I have first. I have a is 2, b is 6, c is 3. My formula, x is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, the entire thing over 2a. If I fill my values in here, I have negative b, b is 6 plus or minus b squared, 6 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 3. The entire thing divided by 2 times a, which is 2. If I start to simplify that, I get negative 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 4 times 2 times 3 is 24. The entire thing divided by 4. If I then keep going here, that's square root of 12 over 4. That's an exact answer that looks like it's simplified as far as you can go. You can actually do one more thing to simplify it without having to pull out your calculator. If you know something about simplifying radicals, like that square root of 12 there. So what I mean by that is, we'll take it over here. If I was to write this as negative 6 plus or minus, instead of root 12 here, I'm going to write it as square root of 4 times 3. And then instead of square root of 4 times 3 like that, I'm going to write it separately as square root of 4 times square root of 3. And then instead of square root of 4, I'm going to write it as 2, because that's what the square root of 4 is. This expression, negative 6 plus or minus root 12 over 4, is the same as negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 3, because root 12 is the same as 2 root 3. The reason that that allows me to simplify it a little bit is because then each of these things can be divided by 2. They all have a common factor there. 
that I can simplify a little bit. If I divide each of those terms by two, I'm gonna get negative three plus or minus one root three over two, just like simplifying any other kind of fraction. This and this are the same, they're equivalent. They're just, this one is in lower terms. You can go to a calculator and just confirm that they're the same. I'll get the calculator out right now to show you. Uh, so we'll do this as quick as we can here. Put each one in, see that they're the same. And then we'll put the other one in. you get the same thing, right? So they're, they're equivalent to each other, one's just in lower terms. You would find the same thing if you went and, and did the other one. I'll do the other one now just so we have both answers as approximate decimals. Now I'll use this entry and just change it. It doesn't matter which one I use, whether we use the one with the lower terms or the original one, because I just want to change that to a minus and then see what the other value is. Now you'd find that if you put the one in with the threes on the top and the two on the bottom that you'd get that same thing again. So approximate answers are roughly negative 0.63 and negative 2.37. Those are approximate answers. Uh, but the this is an exact answer and this is a more simplified exact answer. This is correct. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just not in lowest terms. It's like saying uh, six quarters instead of three halves. They're the same thing, one is just in lower terms. All right, that's a little side note there, but uh, there you have some examples of finding solutions to quadratic equations and x-intercepts of quadratic functions using the quadratic formula.